Well, my name is Jim Sharnetsky, and uh, as far as my background, I was employed for 27 years as a police officer for the Brown County Sheriff's Department. I think my greatest accomplishment there was implementing the 911 uh, concept. Uh, it was just a life-saving deal. And it, it, we started very meekly, and it just bloomed into what it is today uh, with the central dispatch for Brown County. And I, I remember one time uh, we were at some function, a church function, and uh, somebody fell down on the ice and somebody said, hey, just call 911. They'll send all the help out there that you need. It just gave me a warm, fuzzy feeling to think yeah. that people we're using that, and in, indeed it was saving money. So for the past 20 years now, I was a municipal judge for the village of Alloway. Bobby was in the hospital having a, a knee replaced, and I was up visiting her there, and I had to go down to my car to get a document on it, and I came back up and I, I, I couldn't hardly breathe. Next thing I knew, I was being escorted down to the emergency room at St. Vincent's and had a heart attack, followed by open heart surgery, <clears throat> five bypasses, and a uh, pacemaker put in. 28 days in, 28 days in the hospital. And uh, then after that, I developed a lung problem. Um, uh, my lungs filling up with fluid, and so they make lungs collapse. To one has come back, and the other is still not uh, completely cured. It, it won't cure itself. It uh, in the operation, I said at my age and my state of health, I would never survive that kind of an operation. Uh, we all sat down and talked about what would be the best for me and the best was let's get quality life for the short time because I'm, I'm going to die, I guess. I accepted that. Uh, we all know I'm going to have to die. And lo and behold, along came Unity Hospice, one of the best things that ever happened to me after I had my heart attack. A compassionate, uh, very competent, the people are God sent, and uh, anybody that's fortunate enough, and I feel fortunate to be uh, a part of the Unity program. Uh, God bless you all. When the topic was raised about should hospice be an option for him, his initial reaction was no. Um, hospice, either you're all just going to leave me to die. And um, we had a lot of heartfelt conversations about what hospice was what his goals were, and that it was really about making him live better. And that um, by starting hospice, um, he was going to actually enjoy the end of his life as opposed to feel like someone was going to leave him to die. And so I think um, that has proven to be really true. Um, when his Evaluation reevaluation came up. He was actually a little frightened that they might kick him out of the program, <laughs> and we That's had true. to talk about the fact that, unfortunately, he still has all the same chronic conditions. Um, but it was really truly a testament to hospice that he had done so well, um, and that he was doing so well. So um, he's come a long way in his acceptance. He has that. He has said from the get go and continues to say almost daily, "This is too good to be true." and he is so thankful for the care that's provided and uh, amazed at, at all that they do and how they take care of everything. He really enjoys the visits. Yes. <laughs> he loves to tell stories and talk to people and he really enjoys on Tuesdays when they come. Um, and I think it's interesting too how Tuesday came about because part of the reason his visit is on Tuesday is because when he initially started hospice, they asked him, what are your goals? And one of his goals was to finish his judgeship term, which was ending in April of 2017. And his biggest concern was, was he gonna be able to live out the 
people voted him in and he needed to live that, that he owed it to them. And his court was every day, uh, or was always on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, yes. So by design, hospice drew form to meet his goal, came every Tuesday and made sure he was in tip-top shape, mm -hmm. drained his tube so he'd have less fluid there, um, gave him tips and encouragement on energy conservation mm -hmm. so he'd have the voice mm -hmm. and Brought in the oxygen at all uh -huh. to, to um, hold court on Wednesdays. We have a good team. Amy is his nurse, Jane is the social worker, and Larry um, provides the uh, ministry support. And um, it took a lot of the burden. He, he accepted at that point well, he what we call the new normal, right? Mm -hmm. And he didn't like Brenda and I having to give up our time oh, to yes. help him out. It was very hard for him, and we didn't mind doing it at all, but he, he was relieved that he wasn't putting that burden on us anymore. Yes, even though it wasn't a burden to us, he felt that it was. So you're right. absolutely right. That was one of the, the immediate benefits, is that it made him feel better about it. And we could just come over and visit, mm -hmm. and we weren't so much the caregivers anymore. We've been with Unity. Uh, it'll be almost a year in July. And um, all I can say about it is, it is wonderful for him and wonderful for me. I no longer have to worry about uh, measuring out his pills and making a mistake. I no have to worry about uh, taking him to the doctors uh, three, four times a week. I can call Unity any time of the day or night, and and they will help me. And uh, my husband is is teaching us all how to die. Our girls have said that. Dad is teaching us how to die. We do have a new normal, but that's, that's okay.